Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, memory at up to 17,000, AMD makes me cry, Intel's art can challenge AMD's best, and Ryzen 6000 APUs, Zen 3D, and so much more. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, Samsung recently held their Tech Day 2021, and they shared some really wild stuff about their next-gen memory tech. Of course, I know DDR5 was only just released with Alder Lake, but it's pretty wild just how big of a difference we could see. For starters, it's supposedly twice as fast as DDR5, which actually means we can expect DDR6 modules to come with a base speed of 12,800 megatransfers per second. And yeah, that's the base speed. Of course, I have no doubt that'll come with much looser timings, but that's pretty much always the case with faster memory. Still, 12,800 is pretty wild, Plus, they claim up to 17,000 with overclocked modules. Not only that, but they went over video memory, with GDDR6 Plus getting a big boost from 18,000 megatransfers per second to 24,000, and GDDR7 getting up to 32,000. At the end of the day, this may not seem like a big deal, but as performance increases, memory speed has to keep up, especially in GPUs. But first, did you know that you can actually build credit with a debit card? Well, you can with today's sponsor, Extra, the ultimate solution for anyone new to credit or trying to rebuild. Actually, it's great for everyone. Here's how it works. You connect Extra to your existing bank account, and they give you a limit based on your real-time balance, which means you can't overspend. Then, every time you use your Extra debit card, they take the money out the next business day, so you don't have to keep up with how much you owe or have a huge bill at the end of the month. Finally, all the payments are sent to credit bureaus at the end of the month. It's that simple. Plus, you can earn up to 1% in points for everyday purchases. Oh, and did I mention there's no credit check? So don't wait and start building your credit with a debit card by visiting the link in the description below. Next up for today, according to a new report by the Board Channels Forum, AMD has notified AIB partners, along with all of their other partners, that the company is set to increase prices of their entire RX 6000 series of GPUs, specifically by around 10%. Now, that doesn't mean you'll see price jumps higher than what they are on eBay, since sellers have them as high as they can sell for, so they'll just have to eat the difference. But it will likely affect anyone hoping to get lucky with some restock at MS. RP, and it could also mean even longer before we get there. According to the story, this is due to TSMC's rising foundry costs, and I have little doubt the prices are rising. My main issue is really in scalpers. I can understand supply and demand. I mean, who goes to eBay to sell an item, sells it for higher than they thought, and goes, no, no thanks, I'll take the lower bid. No one, but scalpers are driving up the cost by creating artificial scarcity. Market pressure pushes most companies to sell at at least somewhat reasonable prices, while scalpers can't be influenced by this. Simply put, I wish AMD would focus on solving this issue and getting more stock before they lose customer interest from a key market. Gamers. Of course, this still sucks all the way around. Next up, we have a story from known leaker Raichu. In a new tweet, he mentions that the best product to look forward to in the first half of next year are Intel's upcoming DG2 mobile GPUs. In fact, he claims they may actually be able to match AMD's 6800M, meaning Intel's upcoming Arc GPUs are looking better and better. Of course, it could just mean Alchemist is more efficient at lower wattage, but that's still a huge feat. I mean, AMD is definitely no joke at this. And sure, he says maybe, but that just means he doesn't have 100% confirmation. If this is true, we may be looking at the next mobile discrete GPU champ. Let's just hope their desktop GPUs can translate to great performance as well. And lastly for today, we have a new tweet from known leaker Graymon55, and it's definitely exciting. As you can see, he lists the products we can expect from next year's CES in January, which may sound far off, but it's actually just a few weeks. Now, these are products he says may be announced, but really a ton of leaks have pointed to these. Either way, first up is Zen 3 Plus, which he makes very clear in a later tweet is Rembrandt. 
For those who don't know, Rembrandt is the architecture for AMD's next generation APUs. And that's actually a really big deal because it's set to finally do away with Vega in favor of their newest RDNA2 architecture. That's what makes up their RX 6000 GPUs. Not only that, but it's set to be built on TSMC's updated 6 nanometer node. Last we heard, Rembrandt could come with up to 12 CUs, which may not sound like much, but remember that the 6600 only has 28 CUs, and it's able to run this 12 game average of 111 FPS at 1080p. So even at half that, we're looking at playable frames. Cyberpunk 2077 even gets 60 FPS at 1080p high settings. So medium settings would likely get in the 30s with this. Of course, that also depends on frequency, so it's not a perfect comparison, but this could finally be a point where iGPUs can really play AAA games. Basically, Rembrandt could really help those who can't find a discrete GPU, and I think that's a big deal. Next up is AMD's Ryzen 6000 or Ryzen 3D, whatever it ends up being called. Either way, we know it uses 3D stack cache. Next is Navi24, which likely makes up the RX 6500 XT and RX 6400. Two new GPUs that recently leaked. Then we have the 3090 Ti, which is of course likely set to be a huge power hog, but we shall see what Nvidia can bring. Either way, CES is set to be a huge event, and make sure you're subscribed to GamerMeld for all the juicy updates. So while that does it for today, what are you most excited for at CES? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!